sequels. Something that a lot of people take for granted and are like a hit or a miss. They're kind of the thing that you would find in circumstances where once you've seen the original, you see the sequel and you go either that was much better or that just downright sucked. But why? Why is this? Hey guys, my name is Dave and welcome to another video. Now from what I just said, a lot of you are probably going, uh, duh. It's because they are always, whatever the first one presents or whatever its predecessor is, we kind of base it off of that. If it's not better, then we're just going to go, oh, that sucked. If it's much better, we're going to go, oh, that's awesome. We were expecting this, we got this kind of thing. But I don't know, for some reason my mind thinks there's a little bit more than just that. So why don't we get started talking about it? It's And it's not, the thing of the matter is, it's not just sequels. This applies also to remakes, ports, it applies to when somebody puts an IP title to a, it, it just, like when somebody creates a book series based off of a movie, or movie series based off a book, or, you know, that kind of stuff. Well, then why? why? Why do people hate on predecessors? Well, or the reverse. Well, let's look at it this way. Take the example of um, books to movies, because that's like the most common one. We'll start with that and then go to the sequel idea, because both apply in the same manner. Let's look at the movie franchise Percy Jackson and the Olympians, which is based off the book series. Only got two films, and they kind of just died. Just stopped. The books, however, have also got a, a series follow-up. Both series were fantastically written by somebody who's actually a teacher. Which, the fact that they had enough spare time to do that, and still teach properly, shows great multitasker. But I digress. Why were the movies worse? Well, it's because people looked at it in a way, rightfully so, but in a way where they compare it to the books. The books are better because blank, 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 and blank. Or some people would go, oh, the movies are better because blank, 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 blank. People would have their different opinions on that front because they always compare one, the one thing to which the thing they saw second to whatever they saw first. For me, I read the books far before the movies came out. When the movies came out, if I were in this kind of mindset, I would have gone, okay, the first movie sucked, this was different, this was different, this was different, this was different, and it's like, it doesn't match the books at all, almost. But the way I look at it is more, okay, space out the books, look at it as if the movie came first, and it's only the movie. When you look at it that way, it's a matter of, as a movie, what was the quality? How did the actors do? Um... Did the story make itself clear in, in an enjoyable kind of way? Honestly, yeah. If I were to go, as I said, if I were to go about it comparing it to the books because the books came long before, then to me the movies would suck. But due to the fact that I look at it in a way where it's like the movie acted as if it was just the movies were their own thing and had, were not, like the books weren't applicable at all, even though they are, when you look at it that way, it perspective changes big time. And a better example of this would be Harry Potter, the Harry Potter series. There's the movies, there's the books. There's also a script and another ser movie series, but those 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 are completely different. Um, when you look at the movies and the books, ironically, the movies started being made when. The first Harry Potter film came out a little bit after the fourth book did, if I remember correctly. I only know this because at the time I was reading the series, saw the movie, liked it, 
But that's because, again, I have the mindset of not comparing the movies to the books, or vice versa. If the movies had come out before the books, just like prior to this, probably would have ended up thinking the books were worse. They ripped off the films, or vice versa. The movie, like, a good reason why a lot of people, if I remember correctly, didn't like the first movie when it came out is because it was being, the story was being told out of order. For example, um, for those, for some reason, who haven't seen the movies or read the books, there's something called Quidditch in it, and the Quidditch matches and Halloween, they're put in the reverse order that the books are. To me, I noticed that. And it did bug me at first. But nowadays, if you were to ask me to compare the two, I'd be like, the movies are good for what they are, the books are great for what they are. Books have more details, sure, but they're books. If you implemented what was only shown in the movies and the books, the book would probably be like... 100 and something pages. But if I remember correctly... Well, who am I kidding? I think the books are like... Depends on the book. I guess a good example is the... Fourth book, if I remember correctly, is about 400 to 600 pages. If the what the movie showed was what was in the book, split that in half, and that's probably about as long as the book would be. But with that aside, I think that kind of gives an idea of how I see it. People always compare to what they originally see. And if it's not what they're looking for, they will hate it. If it is what they're looking for, plus a little bit more, they'll love it. But if for some reason, if it's on the dot of what somebody's looking for, they'll get pissed off. Why? That one I don't even know. Like, I could theorize, but I have no idea why. People are given exactly what they want, and they hate it. This doesn't apply to everyone, but I have noticed this little pattern. And it is more or less kind of sad. But it is what it is. I mean, a good example of this would be... Moving over to the, ass, the idea of video games. I remember back, like, before 2017, people were begging for the Legend of Zelda franchise to have well more open world and have, you know, kind of... For those who play video games, The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask was the only game that mainly focused on side quests. People wanted that, but well more open world. Well, they got it in Breath of the Wild, the game that took much longer to make than any other Zelda game. When that released, though, it was like a 50-50 roll on whether somebody liked it or not. Much, many, many more people like it now, and it's been well more accepted. The reason people didn't like it is because the formula of how these stories were laid out and how the gameplay worked was completely altered to a specific degree. However, it, like Majora's Mask, focused main, it had a lot more side quests in it. It was like the Zelda version of The Witcher. Anybody who's seen the show, have you read the book? Because, quite frankly, hard to tell which of the three is better, the game, the book, or the movie. Series. It, not a movie, it's a TV series. The book was the original, but still. Anyway, I'm getting off topic. Um, people did not accept this because it what it strayed from what people loved for almost 30 years. There was one particular formula. Do blank amount of dungeons, go to the final area, and beat the final boss. Some of the, Most of them had story within it, it, when, when that happened in, like, 92, I think. Um, somewhere around there. When The Legend of Zelda Link to the Past came out, it gave off a very specific formula that up until 2017, the franchise had followed. Which was basically, 
tell a story, go to eh, like five, six dungeons, get a little bit more story by going through another mini tight dungeon, go through like three or four more dungeons, go to final boss dungeon and beat final boss. And sometimes that'd be like reverse, where it'd be three or four at the start and then seven afterwards. In fact, most of the time it was that second one. This formula got strayed from, and almost everyone hated it at first. It became acceptable over the years, but it's because it wasn't what people were wanting. They wanted open world, they wanted Majora's Mask again, but what they were given, which was basically what they wanted, they hated it because it strayed from what Zelda was for 30 years. Now the obvious answer to why people hate that kind of like rehash, hey let's remake it in this concept because you know, reasons, different individual reasons, is the same as what I was ta when I brought up The Witcher earlier. That's this what I'm about to say is why I'm bring bringing it up again. The Witcher was a book, a well-written book at that, might I add. It was turned into a video game franchise, which was kind of scattered, scatteredly sold. I think started on Steam or PS2, something like that. And it wasn't, the third one wasn't released until like the PS4, but, and Xbox 360. Maybe Xbox Series, Xbox One. Um, but in the mix of all that, people loved the games because it pretty much, it was like a choose your adventure version of what the book was. Everybody likes getting involved. But then this TV series came out and everybody crapped on it. Not because of the games. It had nothing to do with those. It had to do with the aspect that everybody loved the book why did they hate the show? It was basically telling what the books did. Book. I think there was only one. No, there's two. It's technically The Witcher is one, but there is something that follows. Anyway, I digress. Um, the book, The Witcher, had aspects of it that the show did not. Some major details, some not so much. A lot of people complained that they threw, they felt like they were throwing the show together and not actually thoroughly telling the same story. When the reality is, as long as they got, if you were to separate the two as their own entities and their own things, this detail would not matter. Yeah, they'd still have to give credit for the original owner of the original idea, which every film, every game, everything does do that. So, people hating on it. Why? Because it's not what they want. It's not direct to the point what they want or better. If it's anything less than what they want, even by a small fraction, extremely small fraction, like a billionth of a fraction, for example, They'll hate it. That's something I've noticed. And it's honestly, I mean, it's human. It's how we all think psychologically. That can't be particularly changed to a degree that actually is, you know, feasible. But it still is kind of ridiculous. People's thoughts on comparisons are not all, in fact, for the most part, they're not reasonable. I'm even guilty of this. The good example for me, where I can actually show some guilt on this matter, it's not going to bother me saying talking about this, is more the fact that, well, let's go down the path of Donkey Kong, another video game franchise. Donkey Kong Country, one of the best franchises ever. Donkey Kong 64 came out. I still loved it. Then came Banjo-Kazooie. Now, why did I start with Donkey Kong? Well, because Donkey Kong 64 was the setup for Banjo-Kazooie. 
if Rareware, the company that made the series, got enough support on the ideas, they were planning on making that. And they did. And it was extremely successful. I love it myself. Followed up by Banjo-Tooie. Much, much harder, but still extremely good. Unfortunately, after that, the company kind of went south, tried to do their own things for other circumstances, and ended up almost going bankrupt. So they sold their company to Microsoft. Little bit of a history. But why am I talking about this? Well, the core of all this is Banjo-Kazooie. Anybody out there heard of a game called Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts? All of you who are cringing at that title know exactly what I'm talking about. That The company Microsoft screwed up so many times with like sequels and follow-ups and other ideas to the point where everybody was done, including myself. I am guilty of the whole mindset of comparing and if you're below specific standards or right on the dot of specific standards at certain points in times, done. You've lost. You lost my attention. I officially start hating the certain things that do go underneath. And this one went so far underneath that it's like, that's it's not even the same thing. Movies. A good example for a movie. Star Wars. And almost everyone agrees with me on this one. Not everyone does, but a lot of people do. Star Wars, Star Wars was originally titled, for those who don't know, Star Wars, Star Wars The Emperor Strikes Back, and Star Wars Return of the Jedi. It was not episodes 4, 5, and 6, it was just those three titles. In fact, A New Hope was not even a subtitle at the time. It was literally just called Star Wars back in that time. Nowadays, you've got Star Wars episodes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then the follow-up trilogy after that. 7, 8, and 9 were crap. Now, there are some people out there who disagree with me and to each their own on that opinion, but as someone who actually thoroughly enjoyed, yes, even episode episodes 1, 2, and 3 where there were the characters like Jar Jar Binks who annoyed the crap out of many people... I still thought it was good. Not as good as the original trilogy, but still at least decent. 7, 8, 9, though, ruined it all. This kind of comparison that I'm presenting, this kind of comparison that comes to my mind, where I'm going off of that kind of thing, these are the rare circumstances where I'll actually do that when I have something to base off of other than just the original... Like, it, let's put it this way. If Episodes 1, 2, and 3 did not exist, and I was comparing the original trilogy to the trilogy that was made by Disney, I wouldn't be judgmental about it. Because it's just like, okay, so it's a follow-up. Okay, whatever. To each their own. Not as good, but I'm not going to be too harsh. The fact that there are two trilogies compare it to. And yes, the prequel trilogies weren't quite as good as the original trilogy. It was, they were still so much better than episodes 7, 8, and 9. I mean, people, even, even the original founder, George Lucas, would look at them, look at those videos and go look look at the films and go oh what have they done to my series he even had admitted that in the first three weren't quite as good as his original trilogy like it didn't have the same direct spark but he wasn't exactly cringing at his own projects and there are some people out there who do even me i've done that before i've looked back on my content and i've gone ugh with some of them. It happens to the best of us. But you know what? Not if you're comparing multiple circumstances to the one. That's like the only... For every time that I've done something like this, those are the only times that that's the case. I mean, that's a pattern that not a lot of people follow. But that is one that I do. Which I understand why most people don't. They have a specific standard. It's not met. 
this the thing that doesn't meet those standards, crap goes over it. A good example of this, final example for before I end, would be The Last Airbender anime versus M. Night Shyamalan's what a lot of people consider extremely crappy movie rendition of the anime series. The movie only represented one fraction of it, of three. Books one, two, and three. Air, water, fire. He only did air. I think that's the order, at least. He did the first book. There are three books, he only did the first one. And it got so much crap because of the fact that that now there are details in there that make sense. I did not crap on it. For what it was, for what they tried, for the time era they did it in, it was decent. It wasn't one that I'd want to constantly watch excessively. I would definitely prefer the anime over the live action. However, the, I, I know that the reasons for why a lot of people crap on the movie is because A, he said Aang's name wrong. They called him Ong. Which doesn't make much sense to a lot of people. Reasonable. And if it was just that one thing, I would definitely be more questionable. But it wasn't just that. They messed up a lot of different details within it. I'm not going to go too much into that. That can be like for a rant or something else for some other video. But the fact of the matter is that movie got shat on because of the fact that M. Night Shyamalan did not follow to the dot the anime did, which was a lot what a lot of people were expecting. And it went so far underneath those standards that anybody who was hardcore fans of the anime, none of them liked it. None of them. And I know a lot of hardcore Last Airbender fans. Avatar The Last Airbender, I should say. So why is it that people have a tendency to hate sequels or reiterations of certain stories? Well, honestly, outside of the obvious answer, I think people just expect too much. Is this a bad thing or a good thing? It could be either or. But in the long haul, Every single opinion that someone gives is their own. Hence the big phrase, to each their own and its existence. My opinions are a lot different than many others on this matter, and that's fine. A lot of people hate certain things for certain reasons. I don't. <laughs> I have no reason to hate on anybody for that. I really don't. I have zero reason for that. And I never will have reason. But... As others hate on certain things, I will too. And I'll respect it. I'll respect them. As long as they do me. And honestly, as long as they do respect me. But as long as that's the case, whatever the reason, people hate certain sequels or certain uh, prequels or certain first stories compared to the seconds, it's all just opinions. And that's all it is. With that being said, I am going to leave this video here. So thank you guys so much for watching this episode of, uh, I guess this is a discussion rant video, I guess. If you did like this video, make sure to push that like button and so far you can't see it anymore. If you really liked it, consider subscribing to the channel. Do you have a different particular opinion on why, you, how you feel about this kind of matter? Uh, let me know in the comments below, or if you have a specific topic you'd like me to talk about, um, discussion rant wise, or about myself, or... For the History Talk series that I have on here now, why not let me know about that in the comments below as well. Want to check out any others that I've done prior to this? Click the link on the side of my head. Try and take you to that destination. Or if that's not quite floating your boat, why not check the other side and train might take you there. In the meantime, though, I don't usually talk about that, but you know. I'm so used to saying it now that I might start just tooting my horn with this one. But for right now, I'm going to head off. Maybe we'll bring the train over here at some point. But I'm going to head off. Thanks again for watching this video, everyone. And I hope to see all of you in another. Bye for now.